we know each other so well that I now will allow you to ask me any question you wish. But I reserve the right not to answer any of them. <laughs> the next story involves a food called haggis. We were staying at his home near Dumfries, Scotland. He needed to work that morning and suggested that we visit Dumfries. When we returned from our trip, Miller asked us where we had had lunch. We told him that we had visited a pub where we were introduced to haggis. Miller responded, responded in disbelief. You had haggis? He then explained how haggis is made from the sweepings from the floor of a meat processing plant. <laughs> Later, he sent us a postcard showing an exacerbated fisherman who had failed to catch even one fish. The fisherman said, quote, the fish wouldn't even bite on haggis. <laughs> I replied by sending him an item from the Vermont Country Store, a mail order company. It showed a large can of haggis with a high price tag. <laughs> haggis was extolled as a great Scottish delicacy. <laughs> then there was the trip to Memphis in 1987. Miller and Andrew, his son, were taking an American trip together. Their stay with us ended when we all drove to Memphis for the 1987 Congress. Nearing St. Louis, Missouri, my car began to sputter when the air conditioning was turned on. We could not drive further without air conditioning. I turned off the interstate and drove to a small community with which I was acquainted. The Ford dealer told us that only a Chrysler dealer could fix our problem. There was no such garage in this community. Then the motor failed. The man at the garage called a Chrysler garage for us located about 10 miles away from where we had exited the interstate. The Chrysler dealer sent a wrecker, a truck with a derrick, to fetch us to the Chrysler garage. <coughs> To tow our car, its front end was hoisted about 30 degrees into the air. The four of us rode in the car, our bodies tilted back. <laughs> Miller suggested that we buy a bottle of wine and four long stem glasses. <laughs> we could ride in style, sipping our wine and waving to passing motorists. <laughs> the humor of this vision helped us complete our trip to the garage. Unfortunately, because the Chrysler garage did not have the necessary parts, we had to rent a car from the dealer. That was a trip we could vividly remember. Following Gene's death five years later and the onset of my vision problems, I withdrew from an active role in PCP. Miller did not forget about me. During those ensuing years, we exchanged many letters and photos. We kept track of each other's family. Miller was a good friend and a gifted letter writer, as well as a gifted psychologist. I will miss him. I will miss him as will many others who knew him. So that's from Alan. Next, we have Don and Amberly give a brief tribute to Miller. They were the ones who invited him for the Lifetime Achievement Award. They can say what they want about me versus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, thanks for stealing some of our thunder, Larry. <laughs> um, unlike uh, the rest of the, the panelists today, we haven't had the pleasure of knowing Miller quite as long. Uh, but we consider ourselves very lucky to have known him even for a brief time. Um, and it all started when we got roped into running a conference. <laughs> and we decided, well, if we're going to do this work, let's make this a conference that, that we're going to really enjoy. Um, so we talked about some ideal speakers for our keynote address. And Miller was, needless to say, at the top of that list. Um, although none of us had ever met with Miller, we had read several of his papers through Larry's classes. Um, we weren't sure if he was still actively uh, publishing or, or presenting. So we decided to take a, a shot in the dark and, and try to contact him. It took us a little while to track down his, his contact information. But when we did, he was uh, extremely gracious, extremely appreciative of the fact that we would want him being the keynote speaker at our conference. Um, we. Once we, we realized he was, he was going to come and it was going to happen, um, we decided to come up with a conference theme that we thought adequately reflected um, how we feel about Miller's work. Our theme was constructivism, creativity, and connection. Uh, the constructivism part is obvious, or should be. Uh, the creativity part was uh, stemmed from how um, we had 
viewed Miller as creatively pushing psychology to to explore its boundaries and to to surpass those boundaries, making it something um, something more personal, something more poetic, uh, enchanting is Miller's word, um, something greater than than what it once was. Uh, I'll have Amberly going to talk about the connection piece. So Miller had certainly written about connection in terms of community of selves um, and also interpersonal connections. And I think he really embodied this idea of connection. And we felt that, um, I, I could say that from the day that I met him, the night I met Miller, um, I remember feeling extremely anxious. It was the day before the conference was about to begin. My head was spinning with details and, and also some anxiety about meeting Miller. Um, I was a little starstruck or scholarstruck maybe. Um, and I was surprised at how when I was, I felt like we were hosting Miller and yet he almost served as a gracious host for us. Um, we had dinner the very first night Don and I did. Franz was there as well. Um, and Miller just asked a lot of questions about us. And, I realized that this wasn't a dinner about sitting around and discussing papers, but really was a dinner about connecting and, and really learning who the other people were at the table. Um, and I really valued that and kind of thought, well, this really helped to put me at ease. Um, in retrospect, as I was, as I was reflecting on, on what I wanted to say, I'm kind of surprised that I was surprised then because I think the, the entire time we were planning the conference, Miller made special efforts to really get to know who we were. He was communicating with Don primarily, but wanted to hear from Valerie and myself about who we were, what we were interested in, not just psychology, who we were as people. Um, he asked me a lot of questions about my family, um, made sure to connect about, he lived in Pittsburgh for a year where I grew up. And so it just felt like the entire time that we were working with Miller, he was very interested in who we were and, and likewise. And then, a small story afterwards, he, he sent us calendars, although mine never arrived. Mine got sent back to Scotland twice. And so we were having correspondence about this. And I have to say right now, I have so much regret that my calendar didn't arrive. Um, but really appreciate this, how much Miller thought of our invitation. Um, and I imagine, as those of you who know Miller well, I, I imagine you're not surprised at these stories. Um, I was also really impressed with his sense of integrity. He knew who he was, he knew what he stood for. He was not willing to, um, to really compromise his principles. And, um, and in some ways, the creativity adds to the integrity. And one of the things I want to share is we asked for a bio to put in the program. And this is what he wrote. By the time of this conference, I will have been a clinical psychologist with special interest in psychotherapy for 50 years and some kind of person for 73. I was deeply influenced by George Kelly and my long-term quest for understanding in psychology has largely been inspired by his. In order to come to some understanding of who and where we are, we have to tell stories. Perhaps you can conjure your own stories of who I am from these photographic hints and scraps. All of these photographs are still um, accessible on last year's conference website. So, uh, as you can probably tell, um, it was a joy to interact with Miller during the, the few days that he was here. Uh, and and then there was very much a personal connection made with him. Um, the other piece that we were planning for the conference and, and did was to give Miller the Lifetime Achievement Award, as Larry had mentioned. And we were so focused on how honored were we were that 
we would be the ones that give Miller this award, um, that it came as a surprise, at, at least to me, um, at how visibly touched Miller was to receive the award um, when, when he was presented it. Um, I think it speaks to how, um, what a, a, a great person he was and how uh, his level of gratitude for being part of this, this community and having himself recognized and his role in this community recognized. I think his work continues to uh, affect many of us as, as Larry and I live We are honored to be able to publish his paper in the edition of the Journal of Constructivist Psychology that Don, Valerie, and I are co-editing. That will be, come out um, next summer. And the, the name of that that paper is Enchanting Psychology, which is based on his keynote address. In that paper, Miller indicated that he often asked himself, what is the deep song of my heart here? Our hearts are singing a song of sorrow. Next, we're going to hear from Beverly Walker, who's reading a paper that uh, Nadia put into the room.